Ever since I was a kid, there are two things I have always loved. Baseball, and Star Wars. At the time of making this video, we have not had much Star Wars content on the channel. So, I thought it would be a fun idea to do a deep dive into a Star Wars game, similarly like we did for The Last of Us. When it comes to Star Wars games, there are so many to choose from. The classic Battlefront games, Knights of the Old Republic, and Republic Commando. The era of LucasArts games prior to the purchase of Disney consistently delivered fun and memorable Star Wars titles. But if you looked at the title of this video, you can tell where I'm going with this. The Force Unleashed. So, what made The Force Unleashed so great? Force Unleashed would be one of the last games developed by LucasArts, with the last one being The Force Unleashed 2. LucasArts would continue licensing games through 2016. The Force Unleashed was released on September 16th, 2008 across just about every platform. The ideas for this game started back in 2004. There were over 100 concepts for a game before choosing this one. What made the team choose the concept for this game was the gap between episodes 3 and 4 being vastly unexplored at the time. There was a one minute pre-visualization highlighting kicking someone's ass with the force. After George Lucas saw this, he told them to go make the game. At the time, George Lucas had direct involvement with LucasArts games and he spent hours going over the relationship that Starkiller would have with Vader. Also, he floated around the name Darth Hickey. And I want you to get out of this office right now. Let's be glad that didn't stick. The Force Unleashed is very much a physics-based game, and it took seven years for LucasArts to get the technology where it needed to be for the game. A full year of production for The Force Unleashed began in 2007. The game is intended to make the player feel like they are in a Star Wars movie. The casting for the game took four months in part by implementing the use of motion capture, so you can see the striking resemblance between Starkiller and its actor Sam Witwer. The Force Unleashed has such a unique story. The game starts you off playing as Darth Vader. You should already be sold on it. The Empire is invading Kashyyyk, the Wookiee homeworld, searching for Jedi that have survived Order 66. Upon ravaging your way through the Wookiees and some stormtroopers, you find the Jedi you are looking for. You take him out without much problem because you're Darth Vader. Where is your master? The dark side has clouded your mind. You killed my master years ago. Then now you will share his fate. A son. Run! Now that is how you introduce the protagonist for the game. Vader, especially before Disney redid the canon, was monumentally powerful in Legends. You already have a scale of what Starkiller is to become, because according to Vader's senses, he is more powerful than his father, and Starkiller was able to grab Vader's lightsaber with the Force as a child. One of the contributing factors to Starkiller's power is that he is the offspring of two Jedi, Kento Merrick and Mally Merrick. They were on a self-imposed exile during the shift to the rule of the Empire. Vader chose to take Starkiller as his secret apprentice. In a scene transition, you can see the hate Vader trained Starkiller with. Imagine that. You grew up with Darth Vader as your father. That must be a traumatic upbringing. Now, as we know from the films, Luke is Vader's son. In the same vein, Starkiller is somewhat like a son to Vader. It is more of a dark side take on Luke and Vader's relationship. It is interesting juxtaposition. Without the familial bond, Vader is brutal to Starkiller and uses him for his personal gain. Starkiller's mission his entire life has been to train and become powerful enough to overthrow the Emperor with Vader. Then your first test comes in the form of Ron Coda a Jedi who is used in militia instead of clone troopers. Leading up to the mission, you are introduced to two of the other main characters in the game, Proxy and Juno Eclipse. Proxy is your training droid, and Juno is the pilot of the Rogue Shadow. Juno shows the light side attributes, and Proxy wants to kill you. I hoped that using an older training module would catch you off guard and allow me to finally kill you. I'm sorry I failed you again. After you complete the first mission and defeat Ram Koda, he delivers an important line of dialogue for Starkiller's development. Since only me. Die! Die! It is there you are given the main theme of the game and arguably all of Star Wars. 
Redemption. This is the foreground for Starkiller's development and shows the conflict within himself to come. Following this, you are sent on your next mission to face Kazdan Paratus. Invader, in true Sith form, doesn't care if you come back or not. Starkiller is focused on his goal of fighting the Emperor with Vader, so you are sent to Raxus Prime with your new ability, Force Lightning. Also, Paratus went crazy to put it mildly. He built the entire Jedi Council out of garbage. Mm, trash! Yeah, I love trash! Yum yum trash! Hell I yeah, I love that trash. little guy! After killing Kazdan Paratus, Starkiller seems a bit taken back. The complexity of his character is shown. Although both of his parents died when he was very young, there is still a connection to the light side within him. As much as he feels the need to hunt Jedi and be Vader's apprentice, he may not want to be. This will be explored more throughout his story. Then for your next target, Vader wants you to hunt down a Jedi who has died in so many different ways. You also see her apprentice, Maris Brood. For this mission, you get my personal favorite ability in the game, Force Repulse. A shockwave you will spam like crazy. What makes Shock T special, besides having 9 lives, is that she was a Jedi Council member, so she is a challenge for Starkiller to prove his worth as a Sith. After fighting your way through Felucia, hey look a Rancor, you finally make your way to Shock T. After you defeat her, she gives Starkiller a lesson. Oh, poor boy. The Sith always betray one another. Then Starkiller reaches out to grab her to no avail. He plays things off as being assured of his actions because he is loyal to Vader, but the seeds of doubt are planted. He was never taught the ways of the Jedi or Sith, he was taught to be an assassin by Vader. The game just foreshadowed his first lesson into how the Sith operate. The Emperor's fleet has arrived. You have lured the Emperor to us. When do we strike? I did not summon him. <laughs> After being brought back from the dead, Starkiller is to begin his light side journey. Vader wants him to construct an army of the Emperor's greatest enemies. As you escape the space station you're on, you rescue Juno on your way out. This is something Starkiller did not have to do, but it builds towards his redemption. The game continues with the theme of going to locations of the movies as you head to Bespin to find Rom Coda. After a discussion with Coda, you learn he has a contact, Bail Organa. Coda takes him to Kashyyyk to rescue Leia to encourage Bail to help you in your cause. There are two cutscenes that are very interesting. After going into a hut, Starkiller sees a vision of his father. Starkiller never had a chance to choose his life. Then when you meet Leia, the game shows you that she is a badass and fearless leader. And what makes you think I need a pilot? In the start of the game, you see what Kashyyyk was prior to the rule of the Empire. The planet has lost all of its life, and the Wookiees are enslaved. Leia wants you to give them a fighting chance by taking out the Skyhook. This is one of the first actions Starkiller would take as a Jedi. Then you head back to Felucia to rescue Bail Organa, and the planet has been engulfed by the dark side following the death of Shock T. After rescuing Bail from Maris Brood and her Rancor, Starkiller becomes witness to his actions and sees himself in Maris. She feels abandoned by Shock T. He lets her go because she won't be free and she'll carry the memories of what she did there. That is speaking from experience. After this, Starkiller has a conversation with Vader, and Juno hears all of it. He is still a slave to the dark side and Vader, although he feels compassion for his new allies. Juno set him straight. She has lost everything too, and doesn't want to leave another life behind. Juno is the light side that resides in Starkiller, and he will have to make a decision for himself and the newfound rebellion. Starkiller has seen what his actions and the dark side do to others. He has felt remorse along the way. Juno becomes his moral compass. This is a huge turning point in his character development. The next part of his journey takes him back to Raxus Prime. The galaxy doesn't believe it is possible to fight the Empire. Starkiller is to show Bale and his allies that it is possible to fight the Empire. In this mission, there is a boss battle with Proxy because this is the best time for him to kill Starkiller. He cycles through bosses you have already defeated, then appears as Darth Maul. It is a fun in-game moment fighting Darth Maul. Following the boss battle, you fire cannons at the Imperial target, then the most memorable moment of the game happens. Your objective is to pull an Imperial Star Destroyer out of the sky. One thing I have to mention about my playthrough. I was playing The Force Unleashed on Steam, and it is buggy. On some sections, the audio cuts out partially. You cannot hear incoming enemy fire. The other bug-filled part was taking down the Star Destroyer. The prompts for you to pull it down do not align correctly. I had to Google the issue and found a Steam discussion board from 2016, and other people had the same problem. Luckily, someone posted a video. The Star Destroyer has to face you, then you have to point it up. 
Starkiller's power is on full display and shows that anything is possible through the Force. The message was sent to Bale and his allies. You meet with them for the founding of the Rebellion. In a twist, Vader arrives with an Imperial invasion capturing all of the Emperor's enemies. Also, can we appreciate that this became a meme? You agreed to stay away! I lied, as I have from the very beginning. There's some interesting dialogue. Starkiller tells Vader he never planned to overthrow the Emperor, and Vader says not with you. Does this give the implication that he knows that Luke is out there, or does he care that little for the Secrets Apprentice? Everything Starkiller has done has been for nothing. He was just a pawn in the Empire's game and showing that Palpatine is always a step ahead. He did their bidding, and the Emperor's enemies have been captured and brought before him because of Starkiller. He wants to go after them. He meditates and has a vision of the Death Star. Starkiller is finally beginning to do the right thing for himself. He says bye to Juno, and goes after everyone the Empire has taken. You get to fight your way through the Death Star, then you find your way to the Observation Deck. It is here Starkiller finally confronts Vader, the man who has made him a tortured soul. The boss fight with Vader is so much fun. You rip him apart taking off pieces of the suit and his helmet. The game does have multiple endings, but for this part of the video, we will focus on the mainline story and go with the light side ending. In the light side ending, you fight Palpatine. Talk about an epic way to finish the story. Starkiller eventually gets the upper hand. He wants revenge for everything Palpatine and Vader have done to him, but he restrains himself thanks to Coda. Palpatine attacks Coda and Starkiller holds off the Force Lightning. He ends up sacrificing himself so others can get away, and the game pulls some motifs from Episodes 4 and 6. Starkiller has become more powerful in death just like Obi-Wan, and the Emperor's overconfidence ended up being his weakness just like Luke would eventually tell him. Everything they used Starkiller for ended up being their undoing. The game wraps up on Kashyyyk. The symbol for the House of Merrick will be the flag for the Rebellion to rally behind. Then Juno has a conversation with Coda. He always had his suspicions about who they were. He chose to help them because of one thing Starkiller held onto till the very end. Juno. After the conclusion for the main story, we will get into the alternate ending and the DLC. The story of the Force Unleashed is a memorable story all of these years later, and Starkiller remains a fan favorite. His journey shows that no matter where you start and how many hardships you deal with in life, it is your decision with what to do with it as a result. His life could have not started in a more difficult position. He was orphaned at a young age and then raised by Darth Vader in a life he never got to choose. Despite being raised in the ways of the dark side and the abuse that followed, he was still able to do the right thing in the end. The story is one of inspiration to take life into your own hands, and it ties together with the movies and various Star Wars themes. This story is part of what made The Force Unleashed so great, a well-written story with a message you can take from it. In the alternate ending, instead of fighting Palpatine, you choose to fight Vader and become Palpatine's apprentice. After defeating Vader this time, Galen Merrick kills Vader and it changes the storyline of Star Wars as we know it. The ending comes in a much more horrific way. Palpatine wants Starkiller to kill Coda, instead he attacks Palpatine and is quickly overpowered. Everyone is killed and Palpatine throws the rogue shadow on Starkiller. In similar fashion to Vader, he leaves him horribly disfigured and needs a suit to stay alive. Starkiller will do Palpatine's bidding until he finds a new apprentice. The first DLC mission we will talk about is Tatooine, A Fragile Hope. This continues the dark side ending and goes into the events of Episode 4. Starkiller is headed to Jabba's palace in search of the missing Death Star plans. Once you are at Jabba's palace, he places a bounty on your head and drops you into the Rancor pit. Once Starkiller escapes, he encounters Boba Fett, and he duels him. He takes him out with ease. Starkiller then makes his way to the docking bay and is encountered by Obi-Wan Kenobi and you engage in another boss fight. Starkiller winds up throwing Obi-Wan into the engine of the Millennium Falcon, then you fight his Force Ghost. The first time I played this, this was surprising to me. The mission ends with Starkiller throwing a tracking beacon onto the Falcon. One part of this mission that was sad is when you find Proxy and Starkiller gives him a genuine thank you. Thank you, Proxy. Certainly, Master. It was so good. The DLC for Hoth continues the storyline, and you guessed it, it's the events of The Empire Strikes Back, renamed Wrath of the Empire. In the beginning of the mission, you have planned a route and fight your way through Wampas. It was cool how Starkiller strangled Captain Kenna through the Force for his failures, very Vader-esque. You failed me for the last time, Captain Kenna. If that is the case, I assure you, I take full... <laughs> The crux of the mission comes when Starkiller confronts Luke Skywalker. Since Vader is dead and he can't deliver the iconic line from The Empire Strikes Back, Starkiller tells him he is the son of Vader. We meet at last, son of Vader. You're wrong. 
Starkiller dueled Luke and defeats him in this portion. Luke even tried to turn him back to the light. In the second duel, Starkiller draws Luke to the dark side, and eventually he gives in and you fight a Dark Luke Skywalker. It still wasn't enough for Luke to defeat him. Sorry Luke, it's Star Wars. The hand has got to go. <laughs> the mission ends with Luke becoming Starkiller's new apprentice. The last DLC mission to mention is Coruscant. This goes in line with Starkiller's light side journey, or the game's main story. The timeline for this event is after rescuing Coda from Cloud City. Shell City. No, Cloud City. Man, how'd you get here? Starkiller heads into the Jedi Temple, which is heavily occupied by Imperial forces. One note of interest upon some research, this was not Starkiller's first visit to the temple. Starkiller had a desire to learn more about his father, Kento Merrick. Eventually, he comes across a holocron whose gatekeeper was Kento Merrick. Starkiller does the trials of the mind of a Jedi. Apparently, they were into puzzle solving. The mission ends in a boss fight fighting a masked Sith, which is a dark Starkiller. Starkiller does cut the mask off and finds out this is what he could become if he continues down the path of the dark side. It reminds me of the cave scene in episode 5 when Luke has a vision where he fights Vader and sees himself behind the mask. This is my favorite DLC out of the three. The mystique surrounding it is intriguing. The cryptic force vision and Starkiller fighting himself shows his uncertainty. Also, it is always fun getting to explore more of the Jedi Temple. The mission ends in haunting fashion. You can never escape me. Are you there? Did you find what you were looking for? The gameplay surrounding the Force Unleashed is physics based like we mentioned earlier. The lightsaber combat is fun, but it is definitely based on Force abilities as the title of the game would suggest. I do love the over the top Force powers, it does show how lethal a Force user can be in the Star Wars galaxy, as well as making you feel powerful as the player. There are some collectibles in the game, there are holocrons you can find to upgrade Starkiller's Force abilities and you can unlock more combos. You can level up through combat and using different tactics to defeat enemies. There are also side objectives on missions you get rewarded for completing. The game has big sandboxes for missions, and they reused the same locations probably due to how difficult it was to get the tech where it needed to be for the gameplay. The gameplay isn't perfect, with ragdoll physics you can get stuck on the ground for a while, also at times you get stunned for so long you can't move and die as a result. Also the purge troopers are so annoying. The game is full of boss battles. Some can be frustrating on harder difficulties, but there's usually a way to cheese them onto the ground and impale your opponent. The lightsaber combat is fun in boss battles, and quick time events have fun scripted sequences. Playing this game in 2022, the graphics still hold up really well, especially the cutscenes. The Force Unleashed has sold incredibly well. It sold over 1.7 million units across all platforms, making it the best selling game in the third quarter of 2008. It was the fastest selling Star Wars game and LucasArts game. It won a Writers Guild of America award for best video game writing. IGN praised the voice acting, especially Sam Witwer's voice acting. Time called The Force Unleashed the seventh best video game of 2008. In 2008, GameSpot awarded it the best use of a creative license and was nominated for best voice acting. It was one of Game Target's 40 games we'll be playing from 2008. The game also received a novelization that was published in 2010. In addition, it received a graphic novel that was released on August 18th, 2008. Both the comic and novel are canonical events of the game. Star Wars fans are familiar with Sam Witwer and what a talent he is. Along with voicing Starkiller, he also appeared in the animated Star Wars The Clone Wars as the voice of Darth Maul. In that same series, he also voiced the son from the Shadow of Mortis arc. He came back to voice Darth Maul in Star Wars Rebels. Starkiller also appeared in Soul Calibur IV. It is also worth mentioning the comparison between Fallen Order and The Force Unleashed. An article by CBR said Fallen Order is the perfect inverse of The Force Unleashed. You can see broad similarities with open level design and playing a narrative as a Force user. Fallen Order is much more grounded than The Force Unleashed. This excerpt from the article perfectly summarizes the similarities between the games. Starkiller and Cal Kestis are opposite sides of the same coin. Both lost an important parental figure at an early age. Both were thrown into a quest they never asked for, but were determined to see through the end all the same. Both found new mentors and troubled ex-Jedi, and both had to take a hard look at themselves in order to decide if what they were doing was actually right. In awe, 
Overall, the Ultimate Sith Edition has so much to offer. The story is incredible and it offers replayability with multiple endings, DLC, and unlocking a harder difficulty. While the game is not perfect, I'd still give it an 8 out of 10, and it is a must play for Star Wars fans. The game and Starkiller are remembered all these years later, and there is still a part of the fanbase that wants Starkiller to find his way back into the canon. Thanks for watching the video, and let us know what you think about the Force Unleashed in the comments section. See you in the next one.